Hello, this is the leader of Team Get Rec Robotics, and this is my event report for the Norwalk Havoc event that happened on November 12th. For this event, I brought heavily upgraded versions of Serial Killer and Counter Attack to compete in the Free Pound class. My first five of the day would be with Serial Killer going up against an undercutter known as Vacuum. It's a jolt kit, and the idea was to use my Titanium Wedge on the front of Serial Killer to deflect the energy back into him and make him destroy himself. Let's see if the strategy worked out. Now, I don't uh, think some of those things you vote for, but I Kokoto would. Kokoto here, delightfully, has had enough weight that he can add giant googly eyes to the front of Serial Killer. Right. Yeah, those are um, critical, in fact. Now, here's the thing. He had to eat another, like, four boxes of cereal between, uh, you know, this competition and his last one because his last robot just went up in flames. His uh, level of iron in his blood is <laughs> frightfully high now. Yes, yes. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, and away robots we go. Fight. Look at that monstrous maw. Wow. On serial killer. Huge opening shot here from Vacuum, run by Lucas Shoe Hill from Woburn, Massachusetts. This is a roboticist here running Vacuum. And look at that. Kokoto has a. Uh, Successfully captured Vacuum. And Kokoto is kind of dominating the, uh, the the pace of this match. Yeah, it's incredible that a robot like this is able to uh, control its opponent to and the extent Lucas that it has. And Lucas just knocking off the googly eyes. Lucas, no! Oh, I need those googly eyes. However, that robot's still, still just stomping about. Now, Lots you of tasty tire, uh, you know, laying in the arena. Yeah, there's, there's not, not seeing a lot of motion here from Serial Killer. I think it's one of those things where we have to hope and wish it alive, you know, Ricky? I, the people at home, if you can clap, if you believe. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, I'm hearing a count out. I think that this might be a count out for Serial Killer. Three, two, one. Oh. I think that Knock is the out. It unfortunate the demise, the but uh knockout. The winner is Vacuum. Well, even though that fight didn't go according to plan, it was still really fun nonetheless. As you saw at the beginning of the fight, Vacuum kind of just threw itself across the box. And then when it eventually landed on the ground, I was on him and I was able to clamp down on him with the cereal box and control him around the box a little bit. As I expected, the Titanium Wedge of Serial Killer did a good job absorbing the hits from Vacuum, but eventually Vacuum was able to get to the wheels. It took off one entire wheel and tore out enough chunks of the other wheel to make it so that it couldn't drive anymore, and eventually Serial Killer got counted out. Up next, we would have Counter Attack facing off against a four-wheel drive vertical spinner known as Pinvictus. Going into this fight, I was actually pretty confident about my chances. Pinvictus had an exposed weapon belt, several exposed drive belts, and a couple gaps in its armor, and I was confident that Spiked Hammer on counterattack could hit those targets and do serious damage. I also got one of my friends to drive Project Striker, my old ant weight, as a minibot for counterattack in the hopes that he'd get underneath Pinvictus and high center him and give me enough time to land a good shot on him. Let's see if that worked out. Eight, uh, so we're still, we're still rocking in that 80s. Uh, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, oh, robots, fight. Uh, oh, that's a spike. Overhead hammer, spike, yeah. That's a yeah. Spike. Full on spike. It looks a little uh, dancing in the wind when it swings. It, uh, yeah, it's got a little <laughs> flop to it. Do you want your spike to have a flop? Uh, maybe it gives it like the ability to kind of wiggle its way into uh, areas of the bot past some armor. Okay. Or maybe it's just fun to have a floppy hammer. <laughs> yes. Commonly, they make the uh, the handles out of hammers, uh, out of just a soft rubber. Yes, that's what you want. You want to yeah. just whap, whap, whap with that hammer um, and just make it go boing, 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 boing all the way around. <laughs> and then it works better. Oh, do I see some? I, I oh, we have a cyclops of a mini bot. It looks like. Uh, Just one one googly eye. One googly eyed armor. It's an ablative eye. It's <laughs> that's what you're trying to go for. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're missing a wheel on counterattack. 
but he's still able to move around, it seems. Yeah, he can uh, crabby around. It's, yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. Whoa. Those okay. forks taking a lot of hits from that grinding drum. Look at that. And that floppy, uh, floppy hammer seems to be able to take those hits I better mean, because of, of its unusual material. Yeah, it's not really doing uh, taking any damage. It's just uh, bouncing away from the impacts. It's really smart. Yeah, I mean, Kokodo does, you know, sometimes, sometimes these things happen. And they are back at it. They're unstuck and starting off where we left off. Uh, Pine Victus appears to be stuck on its own mini-bot. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult position to be in, especially since they've already had their one Ooh. unstick from this match. But here he goes, back out and moving. All of the wheels working just fine on Pine Victus. The weapon having a little bit of trouble getting up to speed. Yeah. Pine Victus is built and driven by Alex Wang. He's uh, one of our Maryland builders here today. Alex Wang um, is a design and build officer in training. He has CAD experience and RC experience on the UMD Leatherbacks. Wow. Yeah. All right. So he, uh, he's he got knows a, a thing a or two. He's got a bit of a pedigree. He's definitely having a fully functional drive right now, but that weapon is just not weaponing. It's, it wants to spin. You can tell... It's trying. It's thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, just not getting the engagement that he wants. Nice pin here nice. in the corner. It's digging those forks underneath the wood rails. That's a really great move. It means that your bot, your opponent has to really spend some energy to get out. And it's especially difficult to get out when you've only got one wheel. And that and is it the, for the match. Yep, that's the countdown. The match has just ended. Everybody's going to make their way to the doors. And this one will go to this the judges. This is going to go to the judges. Our judges, by the way, are three foxtrots and a, and a trench coat. <laughs> you know, ever since Foxtrot uh, retired from BattleBots, it's been looking, it's been looking for a new gig. Yeah, and so you know, we just put three of them, and they're yeah. judging. Knockout. All right. And just like that, the fight ends in a very unusual way. But before we get into that, let's talk about the rest of the fight. It seemed at the beginning of the fight, Pinvictus was having trouble spinning up their weapon, and I used that opportunity to get behind him into the sides of him and bring down the hammer a few times. Everything was going fine at first, until eventually, Counterattack's wheel just fell off. I don't think Pinvictus is the reason for that. I think I just forgot to tighten the wheel hub, and the wheel just fell off on its own accord. I will say, however, even without a wheel, I kept the front point towards Pinvictus very good, and I was able to fire the hammer, and I almost sniped a dry belt, but I just barely missed and got in between the wheels. The next time I fired a hammer, I actually got the spike stuck in between a gap in between his top armor plates, and the bots got stuck together. Unfortunately, after the unstick and the fight resumed, I noticed that my hammer wasn't working, and I think the motor burnt out from it being stuck and me trying to move it. For the rest of the fight, I had to act as a wedge bot, and everything was actually not too bad. However, for some reason, counterattack started getting counted out, even though I thought I was crab walking very well. I even managed to crab walk all the way from one side of the box to the other to my opponent, but the ref counted out counterattack anyways. It's unfortunate the fight had to end that way, but just like that, counterattack goes down to the loser's bracket, where he would immediately face off against Archangel. Archangel is a two-wheel drive egg beater spinner made by Angel Vidal, who's also made Wake and Bake and is a part of the Shredded Bro team. Like last time, my strategy would be to keep the wedgeless pointed towards him and make sure to snipe important areas such as the wheels or the weapon belts. But this time, I made sure to tighten my own wheels and hopefully I could drive better to avoid the same mistakes that happened last time. This counterattack's last chance to get a win. Let's see if it can do it. Next in cage two, counterattack versus Match Archangel. Now, uh, counterattack here is run by Kokoto Mane, the builder of Serial Killer. Angel Vidal is a uh, Team Shredit team member, competing on BattleBots this year with the new robot Shredit Bro. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Elimination bracket round two. This is a do or die moment for these two builders here. Archangel just going in really intent on trying to rip off the arm of counterattack. It wants and look that at that, arm. counterattack's weapon. Its little arm has been stuck there and to the side. However, the motor driving that arm is just about detached. Yeah, that arm is looking sad. It's so floppy. I can't believe it. Oh, no! Oh. 
A bold move. Wow, spinning that weapon straight up into that little beak on, uh, on counterattack. Amazing. That is a bold move. I support it, but uh, goodness. Wow, now, you can see the top of that mini bot just has battery wires sticking out the top. It is an unconventional choice. Let's see if it uh, pays off, I guess, here, Ricky. It's a now, very uh, unique take on a blade of armor. It does look like Brett is trying to come in here and uh, separate these two robots, but I think we are going to go into a pause here. They do appear to be uh, affixed to one another. Yeah, that, uh, that servo motor there on the top of counterattack looks pretty wrecked. So we're going to pause here and go into an unstick. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's more time for Archangel to spin up. And spin up it has. Angel the doll here is fully spun up. Counterattack, though, leaving no breathing room. Immediately on its opponent. That's, look at that image. That's just, oh, remember those wow. wires that I mentioned? Wow, the wires just got sucked into the weapon of Archangel. The minute 20 left. I think we may need to pause this match once again. Wow, there's so many things that can get entangled on counterattack. You know, you've got these exposed wires not designed as an entanglement device. You've got this floppy arm not designed as an entanglement device, but still entangle uh, nonetheless it has, Ricky. It's true. It's... Uh and there's a fine line to walk here because you want that to uh, you want that wire to come in there or you want that weapon rather to go in there load down your opponent's weapon you just don't want it to get stuck in a way that requires the match to be paused wow okay got that wire just uh, you know swinging freely there <laughs> two one fight robots fight how many more times can we pause this match, Ricky? Oh, just three or four two more times, I think. We're coming down on the last minute. Oh, yeah, there's lots of time to pause. Look at this thing. I want to see was, a huge hit here, Angel. There was some sick satisfaction when you said that. Luke. I want to see a huge hit here, Angel. Oh. That. What? Ah. We're counting right, this as a is, pin countdown. This is a pin countdown here. Counterattack counter -attack can only hold that pin for 10 seconds. And now, uh, you can, can see Kakoto just trying himself. to show like I am trying to back up. All right, Angel. With 20, 25 seconds left, Angel has to score a knockout here. Oh, perhaps not a knockout, but there is drive damage to counterattack. That is going to make the end of this. Oh. All right. Mercifully, this is going to go to the judges. But only just barely. Well, that fight was very interesting. Before we get into the judge's decision and how I think about it, let's talk about the rest of the fight. Counterattack's Wedgelitz actually did a good job of stopping the beater bar of Archangel, and the mini bot actually did a good job getting underneath it. A little bit too much, but we'll talk about that in a second. The hammer of Counterattack actually did a good job of stopping the weapon as well, and actually got lodged in between the weapon of Archangel, which made it so that we had to have an unstick. Unfortunately, like with what happened with Pinvictus, after the unstick, it was revealed that the hammer on Counterattack was mostly dead. Once again, the motor just burnt out from the power. As I alluded to earlier, Project Striker, the mini bot, was doing a good job getting underneath Archangel. My friend was driving the bot very well. Unfortunately, he drove a little too well and he got all the way underneath Archangel's weapon and the weapon just cut the top arm which was plastic and it just sucked the electronics into its own weapon and we had to do an unstick yet again. Once the fight resumed, I immediately got underneath him again. However, the pin lasted a lot longer than it should have because I didn't have a lot of traction on my wheels for some reason. I think there's too much sawdust in the arena and it was hard for me to move under the weight of him on my wedgelet. Eventually we got unstuck without having to pause the fight. But as you notice, towards the end of the fight, it was hard for me to move because I just didn't have a lot of traction. Fortunately, there's not enough time for the count out and it went to a judge's decision. Now, unfortunately, Counterattack ended up losing the judge's decision and I'm not 100% sure how. Like, I accept that I lost, but I could have sworn that even though I definitely lost on damage, 
I'm sh pretty sure I won on control and aggression. In fact, the driver of Archangel, Angel Videl, even told me he thought I won the fight. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes. And with that second loss, Counterattack is out of the competition. With Counterattack gone, that meant Serial Killer was my last bot remaining, and its second fight would be against a very colorful vertical spinner known as Chubby Unicorn. For this fight, I switched out Serial Killer's Titanium Wedge for some forks in order to hopefully get underneath Chubby Unicorn and stop that weapon. And the strategy would be the same, which would be to just smother him with the cereal box and stop him from doing anything. Let's see if Serial Killer can get a win. Do that again sometime. Good job, my nose will never look right again. What is going on in Cage 2? This is absurdity. It might have to do with the fact that a rather absurd gentleman named Kokoto Mane is putting his bot Serial Killer into the blue corner. Let's hear a little round of applause for such a strange and absurd bot. It's absolutely ridiculous. Underneath all of those cereal boxes is a real bot, by the way, a bot with titanium and steel and all of the things. Chubby Unicorn is an amazing bot. They've put out some really great showings lately. They defeated Shred It Bro and Project Liftoff wow. in uh, consecutive fights back in April. That was their best showing by far. This bot has been, like, talk about an improvement story. The first time we saw Chubby Unicorn, they were middle of the pack bot, and now they are definitely one of the top notch competitors, somebody to watch at every single tournament they are at. And Next in cage two. Serial Killer versus <laughs> Chubby Unicorn. And then let's not Eight, forget to mention seven, the great team six, behind Serial Killer. Five, They're great. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Ah! I love the giant googly eyes on, <laughs> on the front of, uh, uh, of the front of Serial Killer. It really gives it a lot of personality. And it's not just the brand recognition I see uh, plastered all over the top of it either. There's Chubby Unicorn trying to uh, get one of the UPC codes off of uh, <laughs> Serial Killer so they can send it in for their school. <laughs> we got Brett. Brett's trying to get a little uh, into the action as well. Minute and 30 seconds left in this match. Elimination bracket round two. Wow, Serial Killer holding it together pretty well for this match, I have to say. Ah, uh, look at that. Where is Chubby Unicorn? Uh, it is under the mountain of cardboard. It is now part of a complete nutritious breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love uh, Serial Killer. It's got old school Mega Tento vibes. Yes, very it much swallows so. Swallows its opponent. Very much so. Swallows them and chews them up and spits them out, and I love it. Absolutely. It's even got googly eyes. Like old school Mega Tento. Chubby Unicorn. I mean, it is a bit of a, a muscly bot. We've seen it beat Shred It in the past, but it's just something about it getting swallowed up by Serial Killer. You can't even really see when it... Uh, you know, when it's enveloped. But uh, right now, it's doing a great job of pushing around the back of Serial Killer. Well, yeah, and these, these type of bots, these big, you know, clomping control bots, they really do make things hard for the judges because so much of the match actually happens underneath that, that device. 
You know, Chubby Unicorn could be getting massive dam damage underneath Serial Killer's hood, if you will, but no one would know. No one would know. No one would have any idea. Out of sight, out of mind. Kokodo extremely happy with his performance at Ever the Showman. Thank you so much, Kokoda Mane, for building such a ridiculous robot. We love you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to check out some replay action. Now, how far was it into this fight when uh, when Chubby Unicorn actually lost its vert? I think it was one of those exchanges right there. We couldn't even see what happened. It was under the blanket of uh, carbohydrates. Wow. Yes, Empty the blanket of, of sugar and carbohydrates that is Serial Killer. That, that was an incredibly fun fight. And as you saw, it was an extremely close match that ended via a split judges decision. Uh, the Serial Box did do a good job of enveloping Chubby Unicorn. However, you might notice that at one point, the spoon that actuates the mouth went a, a little too far down. It got stuck into downward position. So even though I could still capture him with the Serial Box, I couldn't articulate it up or down which may have cost me damage points, which may have helped me to lose the judge decision in the end. However, it was still an incredibly fun fight, and I'm just so proud of how this fight went. It was incredibly fun, and the fans seem to really love this fight. And you can see me talk about more of that in my interview right now. I mean, it's always been a goal of mine. I used to be a hard news reporter. I've interviewed one murderer, but never a serial killer. And today is my day. You are clearly a crowd favorite. I know that you did not take this win. Um, also, these were on your robot at one point. Yeah. But you are a crowd favorite. And how does that feel to hear them cheering for you? That feels so good. Um, like, this has been my most successful bot, not in terms of wins. It has never won a fight. But I feel as though I've won. Just everyone has been so supportive. They've loved this spot so much. Uh, it, the community is amazing. And I just never expected the robot to be this popular. Uh, it's just a cool idea I had. I've always liked to make creative and uh, different robots. And it has paid off. I may not take a win today, but I feel as though I've already won. It's a crowd and everything. Uh, this community means everything to me. And so to have them love me back so much, it means a lot. All right, now I'm interested in the boxes, but you know, back there they're telling me to ask you about the weapon. Very important part. You know, let's, let's talk about your weapon. Is it the spoons? The weapon is a cereal box attached to this spoon and it lifts it up using string. It kind of got a little stuck at the end, which is why I probably lost because I couldn't use my weapon as much. The spoon got stuck, so I couldn't lift the cereal box as well. But uh, in general, it's meant to just be a giant cereal box and just envelop the entire opponent. And I did that for a good majority of the fight, but it didn't work out. But, you know, I've always liked control bots. I've always liked weird bots that grab the opponent and make sure they can't do anything. And I really do think Serial Killer has the potential to go far into the future. And Serial Killer will be back. Um, I love this bot. I'm not going to give up on it. I mean, maybe you just need to use higher nutrient-dense cereals. Do you think that might? Also, they asked me in the back, do the googly eyes on the shoulders help during the match? I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Given your record, I'm going to go with no? Apparently not, no. <laughs> well, good luck to you. It's great talking to you. I, I can't wait to catch up again. Everything. I appreciate it. Bye. You know, Kokoto, that guy gets it. Yeah. He really um, gets it. The bot did not uh, necessarily win the match, but it won our hearts and minds. And Kokoto, he's winning at life. Let's totally. Even though both Serial Killer and Counter Attack were out of the competition, that doesn't mean we're done fighting, as Serial Killer then had a grudge match against First Ring of the Day, an amazing lifter bot. Let's see how that fight went. We're gonna watch uh, a little grudge match action. And, and Luke and I were talking earlier, I don't think we should call these grudge matches. I buddy think matches. They should be I buddy like matches. Eight, just buds having seven, a good time, playing with six, their toys. That being five, said, these are two four, of the most destructive three, robots. Two. This One. competition Fight. has to offer Robots Fight. Killer by Kokonomane and first drink of the day by Tom Farkas. 
there's carnage to be had, and we're about to see it. This is really this match, or this match should be called the Breakfast of Champions match because <laughs> you're going to have your cereal, and then you're going to have your first drink of the day, and that is the Breakfast of Champions, if you ask me. You know, if I load myself up with a, a little drink and a, a nice sugary bowl of cereal, I don't think I'm going anywhere the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, I'm the opposite. You load me up with a sugary <laughs> cereal and a drink, I'm going everywhere that day. I've got a lot to do. <laughs> uh, strong showing by these two bots. Yes, absolutely. So this is an interesting challenge for Kokoto. His bot is meant to engulf <laughs> his opponent, and uh, it's really hard to engulf somebody with such a big lifter. Uh, that being said, it's also hard to lift something that is cereal boxes. Yeah, there's nothing to lift. It's just flop. It's, it's just all flop. flop. First flop of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I'm getting hungry or thirsty. I can't tell. Maybe a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Uh, already we do have one uh, eye <laughs> of a uh, serial killer seems to be missing. Just part of it. Yeah, just the center, the, the black dot, the iris, if you will, or the, the, the center of the eye is gone. The rest of it works fine. To see this bot up close, is it held together by string? Is that the no, mechanism? No, no, the string is the lifter, so the, yeah. or the, the thing that lifts it up. So there's a plastic spoon <laughs> and a string, and that's uh -huh. what actually actuates and lifts the, um, the, the boxes up and down. Now, the bot itself is a legitimate drivetrain yeah. with a titanium wedge underneath. <laughs> it is a real bot. It's just that the weapon is cardboard, plastic, and duct tape. I love it. I, uh, I can't put into words. I can't put into words. Kokoto, a student at WPI. Yeah, a legit engineering school. Like, Kokoto is a very, like, he's being trained to be a very talented engineer. He is a very talented engineer. He just loves these absurdist concepts. <laughs> oh, and first drink of the day on its head, but was able to recover. You know, sometimes if you start off your day with a drink, you're going to end up a little bit stumbly. Yeah, a little bit stumbly, a little bit not, uh, worse for the wear, if you will. Check Doesn't out the hold forks. Back, Is first drink of the day going for Bert? I think he is. I think Tom Farkas is tired of Bert <laughs> bullying people, <laughs> and he is standing up to the bully. All right, that's the end of that match. That was the end of that match. I love that Tom spent the end of that match going after Bert the Brick. I mean, that makes him the winner for me. Yeah, uh, well, it is up to us to decide the winner of this match. I vote first drink of the day. Fascinating. You know what? I am going to go ahead and vote for Serial Killer. We have a tie. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, audience, can they vote? Of course they can vote. Okay, uh, just shout it out. Cause some chaos. Who won? Serial killer is the winner. There you go. You win. Awesome. Kokoto, congratulations. Yeah. You are the breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come up here. Come. Um, and I need to know what's inside there. So yes. I don't know if uh, they're free to come up here. But, we might uh, ask them. We might ask open them. In, open invitations. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of open invitations, with us right now, hey. Kokoto Mane and Serial <laughs> Killer. The bot is vicious and destructive. Kokoto, one of the nicest people you'll meet here today. Aww, really? Thank you, guys. To his core. So, Kokoto, tell us about this bot. It's obviously changed a lot since we saw it at the last competition. <laughs> what have you done to make it improve upon it? What have you done to bring it to this competition today? Well, I didn't build it four days before the event. The first year killer was built, you know, four days before the event out of whatever I had. I didn't spend any money on it. I reused my trash bin. I reused cereal boxes, and I reused electrons for my old ant weights. I just built it out of whatever I had. Yeah. And uh, it worked. It did stuff, and it was insanely popular, especially the milk tank ed fight. It really blew up, literally, if you think about it. <laughs> uh, so that one, was, that version of Cereal Clear was gone. It disintegrated. Yes. I, I left oh. it in the trash. So we started from scratch. Uh, so we have this TPU body. It's actually reused from uh, Clyde. You know that flame for robot from WPI? Yeah. Yeah, I'm part of WPI, by the way, and they're we great. We knew that about you. Yeah, so uh, he was just going to recycle it, and I decided to recycle it myself and reuse it here. 
And uh, then, of course, we have the cereal boxes itself. It's attached to uh, this uh, stick, which is attached to a spoon, attached to a motor. And using string, it lifts the corners of the uh, giant cereal box mouth up. And when I want it to close down, I simply push it down. And of course, I also have wedges, uh, depending on who I fight, and some TPU uh, flat bits here. And this is my attempt to make a serial killer that's slightly competitive, but still the same old serial killer. And the popularity has gone has just been mind blowing. Like I never expected it to get this amazingly loved. And the community has shown me nothing but support for it. And I'm just amazed by it. This is my most successful bot, not in terms of wins. It has never won a fight. But I feel as though it has. Yes, it is Metaphorically. one at life. Oh, yeah, technically. That's close. Oh, yeah, I got a split decision win. I'm happy with how that went. And I just never expected it to get this far. And it's still in relatively one piece. The electronics still work. Uh, it's still pretty good. And Serial Killer will be back. Kokoto, we cannot wait to see you come Thank back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are going to go to Allie, who has Chad and Bye. Yahoo. Oh. Yeah, they are. They're coming over to us. <laughs> My final fight of the event would be with counterattack in the free pound rumble. The axe was no longer working, so I just taped on a coat hanger because why not? And since there would be both horizontal and vertical spinners in this, I decided to do a weird configuration that had both the titanium wedge and the forks. Let's see how this crazy rumble went. Oh, Jesus. Well, that was a really fun fight. Counterattack lasted a lot longer than I thought. 
In fact, I think I was the second to last bot left standing before T Free just took me out and won the fight. Uh, Counterattack took a lot of damage and uh, it was just pretty bad. In fact, let's take a look at just how badly Counterattack got beaten up. There are several big gashes and cuts all over the body of Counterattack and its wedges. The wheels have several chunks of foam taking right out of them. And uh, I don't know who, but someone actually punched through my top armor and damaged my battery and vented. And it was unusable after that. We had to throw it away just to be safe. I'm surprised it didn't catch on fire then and there. This was definitely Counterattack's toughest competition yet. It got beaten up pretty badly, but I'm still proud of how it hung about against some of the toughest Beetleweights in the world. And I'm excited to do some improvements to it for next time. And that's the end of my event report for Norwalk Havoc November 2022. And it was incredible. I'm so happy I got to compete again. Uh, so many people loved my robots. They loved me. Uh, little kids asked for autographs and photos. I felt like a celebrity, honestly. And it was just incredible. I fully plan on coming back. It was just an amazing event all around. I'm happy I attended with my fellow WPI students. And they really helped me improve my robots. And uh, I'm excited to work more with Team WPI in the future. Now, Serial Killer and Counterattack didn't qualify for December, obviously, and they can't compete in January because that's for new bots only, so they'll be coming back in March, but I do have something new cooking up for January. I will be bringing back some, some new robot for January, and let's just say it's going to be hot. See you next time. Thanks for watching.